Hi viewers, welcome to Frank Banker Podcast, a knowledge sharing platform for banking, finance and related technology. This episode is going to be very interesting. The reason is that the topic is selected by the viewers. I got lots of messages and emails and the topic topic is robotic process automation RPA. Amit, let's warm up with the concept of robotic process automation. What is it and what is the use case? So the best way to understand RPA wala is to learn, you know, go through an example. Let's say you are handling a complaint management desk at a bank, right? And where customers go on your websites and they put up the complaint on the contact details that you provided and you get an email that this customer has raised this particular complaint to you. Now, before you action on it, you need to do some bit of checks at your end. So first check you would want to do is, are there any previous complaints of similar nature of the customer? Are there any previous complaints which are pending, uh, any similar kind of issues which have been raised by the customer. So that's one. one. So you go to a system, possibly a complaint management system, and then you try to check the previous detail. Then you also need to do, uh, you need to do a check around uh, how important is this client to us, right? Is it a HNI customer, most important customer, a premier customer for us? So you need to do possibly a check in your CRM system, Right, where you are saying that this is a very important client and therefore should be prioritized uh, accordingly. The third thing you may want to possibly understand is who is the relationship manager for this? What is the hierarchy around it? Right, And what has been their response time? And then accordingly decide who would be the right party to prioritize this. So these are some checks you're doing. Now, after you've done these checks, you take out this information and these, uh, you know, some of these facts, you put it in a mail to the concerned team. Right. So there is a mail template in which you are f- fetching data from these systems and then putting those data and sending it to them as a case details. You also need to send a mail to the customer saying that we have received your app, uh, you know, complaint and we are going to process it. In, uh, and there also possibly you need to fetch some of this data, copy paste some of this data and send it to them. So what is happening over here, Bala, is that every time a complaint comes, you have some two or three or four systems from which you are you know, doing some kind of a verification Then you have uh, some data copy pasting which is happening and this is a standard process for all application. Now what if this process can be automated without somebody doing it manually if you can write a program or a code which opens all these windows, logs into those systems, fetches that specific data, puts it on the templated mail and sends it off. Now assumption over here is there is a low judgment involved over here. There is not high level of judgment or a subjectivity involved over here in terms of the decisioning. Now if that is the case where no multiple steps are there and judgment it does not require to be a very uh, very high level one or very subjective one, then you have a fit case for RPA. So RPA is the program for automating series of steps in a low okay. judgment scenario. See, uh, so there are uh, there are two things that I am able to pick it up from here. One, there is a series of steps and second is need for low judgment. That means high judgment cases are not fit for RPA. See, if it is a high judgment uh, case, in that standardization becomes a little difficult. right? There are multiple permutation, combination and variable based on which you, you have to take a decision. A human does it better compared to a program because you start hitting the technology wall moment you try to get into situations where variables are, uh, there are many variables for a decision to be taken, right? So let us let me exemplify with the with a simple uh, case here. Let us say you are handling a customer service desk, right? Let us say it is a call center and customers will call to inquire about the balance in their account. Okay. Now this process of they calling and uh, you know you providing them that specific data can be very well automated through let's say an IVR or through a chatbot. This can be very well automated because the response is standard. You do basic verification, take that input, and then provide output as a simple. But let's say the same complaint, uh, same customer service desk also handles escalations or customers calling them and telling them of delays which have happened. Let's say a customer calls up and say that I have submitted a remittance request at your branch. And it has not been processed. Uh, so customer is angry, customer is irate. And therefore, first is you have to pal- placate the customer. A chatbot will not do a good job right, in engaging with the customer in such a way. Then you do your verification in the systems, right? What is the complaint? What is the transaction? And you see a trail flow. And at the end of it, you realize that there is some error which the trade team has made or the trade desk has made in terms of inputting the SWIFT code or the, the account details. 
Now you have to do apologizing and a chatbot's ability to apologize and again uh, satisfy a customer is, is limited. So in this two cases, first case possibly you can automate it fully. In the second case, possibly the sourcing of information which the customer service executive requires, that piece can be, uh, that piece can be automated. Right? So moment you start getting into the complex, complex decision making, RPA's ability to provide you standardized response gets limited. Another use case is, for example, your bank credit uh, processes. So, so Ahmed, uh, aren't credit decisioning models capable of doing that? But before that, is credit scoring is also a part of RPA? So when you're talking about uh, credit decisioning and you, let's say, have a uh, workflow, a complete digital workflow, where there is application and based on the application data which is provided, there is an auto trigger of APIs of let's say a KYC database, of let's say a taxation database, and this process goes on, right? When then your then possibly your business rule engine comes into the picture, and you are you're doing some kind of a decisioning. Post that, then you have a documentation module where automatic documentation gets generated with the customized fields, and you have a DocuSign. Now this entire process is is digitized. It is automated. And it is linking various applications. So in that sense, you can say this is a, this is a process automation. Okay. Right. But the problem comes in where what I was referring to in credit decisioning is that once you start talking about let's say large ticket commercial lending cases, where the variables are many, and there is a lot of touch and feel and subjective judgment which is involved. In such cases, if you try to force fit through a digital journey, the results will not be robust. Okay. That's the that's the prime part. Okay. That's so two things arise from your explanation. Anything that is programmed to automate a series of action is RPA, correct? Yes, indeed. That is what RPA is. A series of action, repeated task, you are automating through a program instead of you know manually going to multiple systems or fetching the data or copy pasting data. That is indeed RPA. Okay, sounds good. And secondly, the RPA architecture seems to be high reliance on APIs. Is it true? So APIs are a core, you are right there. APIs are a core of the of, of any RPA architecture because what you're trying to do is you're interlinking various applications and wherever possible, therefore, you would want to do the process process through APIs. But it is also possible for possible that some applications you may not be able to do through the APIs, right? There is actually a manual login that you have to do and fetch the data and copy paste the data and then you know then consolidate the information. So RPA architecture, if you talk about, has both aspects aspect of you know automatically triggering and fetching the information but also taking care of the mechanical actions okay. and what do you mean by mechanical actions that means you go to the browser you open uh, the window using certain url then you provide the login and the password you go inside you go to a specific module and then fetch the information so rpa is capable of doing it through apis rpa is capable of doing through the mechanical actions so to say right so both parts are are possible through the RPA in the RPA architecture. So, Amit, uh, what are the other components of RPA structure? So, any standard RPA structure will generally have some kind of a workflow designer uh, where you can set up the series of steps. What is the workflow that you want to automate? Uh, and many of the tools have now a macro recorder or screen recorder, which does the same thing, but it automates that process also where you can record the screen, show the system that how our my flow is working out and then it can automatically create a workflow. So that's one, one part of the RPA components. Then you will have OCR capabilities converting physical documents to digital data. Then you would have some bit of intelligence possibly also built in. So you throw in the AI, you throw in the a a a machine learning. Uh, components to it so that some bit of decisioning can be uh, can be done then uh, there are uh, requirements of you know fetching the data from the web let's say web crawling or web scraping that could be that could be another aspects of it so all these are the broad components which uh, which a rpa suit will uh, normally normally have okay. another aspect over here is an rpa uh, system should be able to integrate well with some of the legacy systems. Oh, okay. So let's say, for example, uh, core banking system, okay. which might be a legacy monolithic system. Okay. So how do you integrate it and fetch the data or feed the data either either ways? Okay. So that could be the second part which uh, RPA suit should be able to do. Right. Uh, one more element is there in terms of the types of RPAs you might have, types of bots that you might 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 have, or the programmed programs that you might have. One could be that. Uh, 
it is a support system to somebody handling, let's say, a client. And you might say that uh, when the client comes in and you need a specific information, you trigger this bot. So what we call as attended bots, right? Then there could be a situation wherein you want this to run automatically at a scheduled time. So for example, uh, the day and batch processing. So you can automate it, schedule it. That's an unattended bot. And there could be situations where both things have to run and what you, what you call it is a hybrid bot. So this primarily talks, is, is uh, this primarily is the total architecture of the of the RPA or the core components of the RPA. Okay, it seems to be very quite technical, right? It's logical, right? You, uh, but, uh, but, I, but I'm sure that we just stop here and not get into the RPA developer's domain. Okay. Right? And keep it uh, limited to the business use cases. Sure. Okay. Earlier, we touched upon credit scoring. You also mentioned about chatbots. Both will require some bit of intelligence, correct? This triggers one question. Role of artificial intelligence in RPA. So when you put the AI into the mix, artificial intelligence into the mix, what you are creating is smart robots. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, so, uh, so you will still have those series of steps. But with AI, you will be able to possibly uh, exclude or include some systems, right? In certain, certain cases, you might want to fetch that data. In certain cases, you may not want to fetch that data. And there is some bit of complexity, some bit of decisioning which is required to fetch that data. So that could be one. So when you throw AI into the mix of it, what you're creating is, uh, you know, let's say, instead of a handheld vacuum cleaner, uh, you are creating a floor, uh, you know, mapping robot, right? So that's the difference it, it creates. Both do vacuuming. But one is handheld and one is uh, one is doing is automatically mapping your house and then then going back to the charging station. What are the popular tools in this industry? Uh, so Bala, you know, our, we normally do not recommend or talk about specific product, but just to give the uh, flavor over here, there are a lot of lot of tools available. Popular ones are uh, UiPath. Uh, then you have uh, Automate Anywhere, you have Blue Prism. A more accessible one possibly is the Power Automate, which comes uh, under the 365 Office 365 uh, suit, suit of uh, Microsoft. So these are some of the popular popular ones. But more important point over there here is that uh, in, in, in terms of you know uh, my own learning around the RPA and my own engagement around the RPA, uh, I see that the focus of the platforms is primarily to make it very intuitive and business user friendly. So the focus is on low code, drag and drop kind of, uh, you know, uh, platforms, which make automation of simple processes very, 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 very easy for the business users without having a very, you know, uh, detailed programming team or having a very large programming teams. Hmm. So Amit, I could understand in this conversation, automation brings efficiency standardization and therefore not only improves customer experience but also reduce costs but the question is what areas you see best fit for rpa see operations of course where you have to repeat you have redundant processes you have to fetch data from multiple application input them possibly converting physical data to digital data and you know scrapping information from a, some kind of a structured source uploading this, sending consolidated information, there's multiple processes around it. So you can create a good, uh, you know, automation in operations necessarily. And, and that's where we have seen the, the biggest use of uh, the robotic process automation. Another important area is customer service and support, right? It might be answering some specific queries when, when a few data points are provided, you want to fetch again from multiple applications and provide, uh, possibly sending automated emails to the customer when, they're, when they reach you. Uh, you know, when they approach you, right? And this again can be coming in from, uh, you know, uh, internal sources or, you know, external sources. There could also be prioritizing element which might be involved over here and the system may want to prioritize it, right? And so if it is a very simple prioritization, as I explained earlier in the example, this can again be automated. Credit decisioning in itself has a scope for a uh, lot of automation. We have talked about it. And in retail banking, I think, a lot of it has already been automated, especially for small ticket uh, lending, which is happening. There are some potential areas, MIS, dashboarding, right? Customization, that could be another area in which you can automate the process, right? Then uh, you can talk about collections. Then you can talk about early warning. These could be some areas where automatic triggering, automatic data consolidation, templates, some bit of decisioning uh, can, be, can be fully, fully automated. Right. So in short, RPA has a use case in front end, 
as well as the back end of a, of a bank. It can reduce costs, right? It can improve TATs. It can enhance customer experience. It can reduce errors. And most importantly, if you're thinking about doing something new, it can reduce your time to the market also. Navid, uh, there is one serious question. With so much of automation potential, it seems to be a threat for the bank jobs, correct? What area should bankers focus to remain relevant? It is. If you are a banker, especially who is into a job which which has a lot of repeated steps, which you are checking multiple applications for some basic verification or information sourcing on a repeated basis and a standardized basis, that's a perfect use case for an RPA. So therefore, if you are a banker, you should be aware that there is a need to upskill yourself and move yourself towards domains where this automation risk is relatively low. So for example, your large ticket commercial lending, your structured finance, your investment banking, your treasury, your uh, HNI, you know, uh, uh, HNI relationship management. So these areas require judgment. These require some bit of customization, and it will take some time before before the current technology catches up over there. But there is one important point, Bala, that the banker of future is sixty percent tech and only forty percent banking. Okay. Yeah. So therefore, a banker who says that. I am just happy interacting with clients. I'm just happy doing my office job, right? Uh, would have to possibly prepare for an early retirement and possibly okay. without gratuity with the speed with which the technology is growing. Okay. okay. Yeah. So keep learning and keep uh, hand, handling, trying to find opportunities to handle more complex okay. uh, you know, jobs is the key to survive longer in the industry. It's a good takeaway for the viewers. It's a good takeaway. At Frank Banker, our attempt is to simplify the banking, finance and related technology in a way bankers should understand without losing its core principle. If you find really this is a great value add to you, please do like, comment and share. Thank you. All.